right, guys, I am recording. I don't know what's going on. It's going to run out after 20 minutes. I don't know if I can do another version. We'll see. But we don't have time to be messing today because this lesson, I, I can record the second half of it a different period if I have to, but I don't want us to get behind. All right, worksheet six and seven. Did you pick up the parent function sheet at the back? Okay. Please don't write extra information on that blue sheet, and then I'll be able to let you use it on a couple quizzes. That seem okay? All right, so today we're going to talk about describing transformations that change a graph from a parent function. Like if I give you this, and then I give you this, you need to be able to tell me what things happened, okay? Um, we're also eventually going to give you a graph and you have to write the new equation. We're going to give you um, worded transformations and you have to write the new equation, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, a parent function is the simplest function in a family. For example, this is a parent function and then this is the transformation that would stretch it vertically. Okay, you've seen this stuff before. Okay, it says in this lesson we'll study eight of the most commonly used parent functions. You have more than that on your sheet, I think. They call this the zero function, which, which would just be like y equals six, horizontal line, constant function, basically. Um, identity function, they say is y equals x, so it's linear function. Quadratic. Obviously, x squared, cubic, x cubed. should learn these shapes, okay? Square root and reciprocal function. Not going to use this one a ton yet. I'll be real honest with you. All right, absolute value function. We're good with that one. Then it gets into some hairy business. Do you remember seeing this one? It's called the greatest integer function. It's a step function. It's also called the round down function. I like this name, honestly, the round down function, because it is the greatest integer less than or equal to something. So I prefer to say you have to round down, okay? So if you put in a negative 1.5, it rounds down to negative two. If you put in a one third, it rounds down to zero. It rounds to the left always. But it looks like this. Um, honestly, well, I hate these as well as you do. They have a ton of real world applications. Okay. Because like if you if you have so much ice cream in your bin and you're gonna scoop out ice cream cones, at some point the fact that you have you can only sell whole ice cream cones, so you're not gonna like it's going to go up by ones, whether there's an extra half an ounce left or whatever. You can't make another ice cream cone out of it. It's going to go up by whole numbers. Um, when you take a package to UPS, if it weighs between here and here, it's going to be this much. If it weighs between here and here, it's going to be this much. It's not a continual function. They don't charge you another penny more every time you go up an ounce, right? If you hit a certain amount, then they jump up to the next thing. So this idea of piecewise where it jumps from one thing to the next or where you can only get whole number answers out happen in real life. All right, we're going to just draw some really quick sketches on here. A constant function, okay? An identity function, what would that look like? Y equals X? Yeah, just something like this, right? X squared is a parabola. Everybody good? Are there little, are these already on there for you? Or, no, okay. You guys are just all, okay. X cubed is like this. I mean, we could talk about some ordered pairs that are on these, but you guys could do that, right? Just put in one, get out, whatever. Okay. Yes. I didn't draw any, even draw an X and a Y axis on that one. Sorry. Okay. What about this guy? Yeah. Half a parabola sideways, 
zero, zero, one, one, but then the next nice ordered pair is like four, two, because the square root of four is two. All right, one over x is this guy and this guy. You put in a positive, you get out a positive. You put in negative, you get out a negative. So it's in quadrants one and three. This makes me nervous. The parent function here, guys, is symmetric about the origin. But as soon as we start shifting it around, it might not be symmetric about the origin anymore, right? <laughs> Just so we're clear on that, because I kind of freaked me out when I saw that. Okay, absolute value function. And I wrote a little note here. Does everybody know where that is on the calculator? Oops. When you go to y equals, if you want to put in an absolute value or a step function, it's under math, arrow to the right one, and ABS is the absolute value. Okay, so if you want to do absolute value of x, that's where you get that one. But if you wanted to do the step function, it's also under math, arrow to the right, and it's the greatest integer function, so it's that number 5 int. Okay, so now this is going to look love. Oops, stop. There's the absolute value, and there comes the greatest integer, just so you know where to get those. Everybody okay? Did you find them? Write it down if you need to. It's math, right arrow. And then again, it was... A, B, S is absolute value, and I, N, T is greatest integer. We good? All right. And this one, again, greatest integer less than or equal to X. It's this type of step function. Is that enough for us for now? It was INT under math, arrow to the right. So everything from 0 to 1, but not including 1, rounds down to 0. But everything from 1 to 2 rounds down and stays at y equals 1. Are we okay? Cube root function is like a cubic rotated, so it's like this. Are we matching what's on the yeah, parent function sheet I gave you? Okay. That's a great question. I should, it's, it's also under math, but I don't think you have to arrow to the right. If I pull the calculator back up here, whoops, click here to pause, recording, I don't know what I just did. Eh, story of my life. Is it still going? Okay. Um, if I go here, clear these out. If I want to do cube root of x, it's just under math. Yeah, and it's number four. Good job, Sam. And then I get this. Everybody good? Great question, Miss. All right. We're supposed to describe a bunch about an absolute value graph. So we're going to go kind of quick here. This is what it looks like. Um, can you tell me the domain and range? Okay. Hard bracket, because you can take the absolute value of zero, right? Even if I didn't draw it very well. All right, what else do they want to know? Intercepts. X and Y intercepts? Yeah, it has an X or Y intercept both at zero, zero, right? That's it? That's the only intercept? Uh, symmetry? Yes. If we haven't shifted it, it has y-axis symmetry, which makes it an even function. Interesting. Okay. Um, continuity. It's 
continuous, yes. No gaps. Um, end behavior. The function is going up on the left. How do I write left? Okay, and the function is also going up as x approaches positive infinity on the right. And again, I don't care if you write the x first. Intervals increasing, decreasing. That's the only one where this one's a little weird. What's happening? The left side of zero, it's doing what? Decreasing. So it is decreasing from negative infinity to zero. And remember, increasing, decreasing, you just always use parentheses. That's the good news. And then it's increasing. How do I want to write that? Zero to infinity. Did I lose anybody? Okay, how about you guys try this one real quick? Just a cubic. Domain, range, intercepts. Symmetry, continuity, end behavior, increasing, decreasing. What do you think about increasing and decreasing? Anybody get that far yet? If I start on the left side and travel to the right, what's going on? Always going up, yes? I'm going to rewrite that word increasing, never decreasing. Now, that would not be true if we start having loop-de-loops -loops in our cube, right? If it's like got a zero at zero and negative one and positive one. This is just the generic graph. All right. Any questions? Did you get the things I did? Right. Anybody? Okay. Now we're going to talk about the transformations. There are rigid and non-rigid transformations. Rigid transformation simply means it leaves the size and shape unchanged. So that would be what? Can you think of one? Shifting it left and right. Perfect. Or up and down, right? Even reflections, yes, reflecting it over doesn't change the size or shape, just flips it upside down. What would non-rigid transformations be? Michael? Vertical stretch, horizontal stretch, vertical shrink, horizontal shrink. Um, also putting an absolute value in, that's kind of a new one for you guys. All right, so a translation just means a slide. We can have horizontal and vertical translations and they are rigid transformations. And the idea, guys, is that they add or subtract inside or outside the parentheses. Now, these are what's on your sheet, okay? I'm gonna try to give you some examples. This column right over here, I want you to write, does it change X or Y values of the function? All right, so when we do plus k back here, 
the whole function, and then we decide to add 6 onto it. What happens? Left, right, up, down. So if I took something like this, what did that do to our parabola? Up 6. Okay. So does that change X or Y values? Y values because it's shifting up. So the ordered pair 0, 0 is now at 0, 6. We good? All right. What would move it down? If this value back here was subtracted, right? So if it's less than 0. So this would be like an X squared plus 6. This would be an X squared minus 6. It would also change Y values. If I did x minus 6 in here, what does that do? To the right. Okay, because it's the opposite of what it seems. Anything inside the parentheses is generally the opposite of what it seems. When we do minus 6, it actually moves to the right, which is changing x values. 0, 0 is now over at 6, 0. What would move it to the left? Yes, putting a, a x minus negative 6, which is a plus 6. Any questions on those? I think we're pretty good with left, right, up, down. So tell me what this one did. Took that v and did what? Anybody? Up 4. What about this one? Left three, two things going on here. Right two and down one. All right. They're going to do this on the homework. They're going to ask you to graph the original function and then a transformed function on the same x, y pairs so that you can see the difference. All right, so describe, here's my x cubed. What is this one going to do? Down 5, so it would be the exact same thing, exact same shape, which I won't do well, down 5. What about this one? Right 3, so it would take the exact one and move it over here. What about this one? Left 2 and up 4. So I'd go left two and up four, and it would look something like that. Everybody okay? This little quick overview. All right. Reflecting produces a mirror image. Okay, it is still a rigid transformation. But when you put the absolute, the negative, I'm sorry, on the entire function, it reflects, reflects it across the x-axis. When you put it inside on the x, so you change the sign inside on the x, it reflects it across the y-axis. Parabola is not a good example for this. Okay, They're using a square root graph. If you have negative square root of x, then it goes down here. If you have the square root of negative x, then it's reflected over here. All right, so outside reflects it across the x-axis, so it's upside down, right? What does that change? Y values. Inside, okay, so if this was my parent function, this would now look like this. If this was my parent function, when I reflect it over the y-axis, it's now going to look like this, okay, which changes x values. When we get to doing some of this, you have to be careful because something like this reflected across the x. If this is negative 3 and this is positive 1, it's now going to